three is lack of repentance or forgiveness. Luke 17, 4. Luke chapter 17, verse 4. Lack of repentance or forgiveness. Matthew 6, 15. Lack of repentance or forgiveness. Matthew 6, 15 says, but if you do not forgive many their trespasses, neither will your father forgive your trespasses. Moreover, no, verse 15. So you must forgive your husband or wife at any time they offend you. Do not let the day cross over. Like, do not let the sun go down. Then tomorrow you continue carrying malice or carrying your face. You will block blessings for that family. The family will struggle because of that unforgiveness. And okay, it's okay too to know that forgiveness is easy when you repent. When I say repent, I mean when you are actually sorry for what you've done. When you say, I will not do this again, I'm sorry. It means they, they will see not trying to do it again. All right? So when there is lack of repentance in the home, the marriage is sure to have crisis. Praise God. And then second, the fourth one is engaging in foolish acts. Foolish acts. Let's see what the Bible calls foolish acts. In the book of Titus 3, verse 3. Titus 3, verse 3. Foolish acts. Someone please read for us. Foolish acts. Mm -hmm. For we ourselves were also once foolish, disobedient, deceived, serving various laws and pleasures, living in madness and envy, hateful and eating one another. Praise God. You see that it's already telling us that foolish acts are when you are keeping malice to your husband. I was counseling a husband. I said, your wife said you don't talk to her. He said, yes, she, she, she don't talk to me. I said, okay, I no need of talking to you people differently. I'd like to sit down with two of you because I've heard you. I've heard her. I've also heard you. But it seems that what I'm saying to you, you are taking it and saying to me, he's not going to agree. And she's also saying the same thing. So I want to sit down with both of you. He said, no, I don't want to sit down with her because ah, she will not start feeling that I'm sorry. I said, sir, what is the essence of, me, of us making this marriage to work? I want to sit down with two of you so that you can make her know you are sorry. She can make you know she's sorry. And I want to see people say you are sorry because all this just in the last one month, nobody has said sorry. It will not work if you don't say sorry. You see, there are times in the life where women are expected to overlook. The women keep overlooking. At a point in time, there is need to say, uh, my wife, my darling, I am sorry. You see, I actually know that I have accepted it here. It will not happen again. Women, trust them. They will start crying and tell you, me too, I'm sorry for it. She will cry. She will be sorry more than you. Just even attempt to say it. But the truth is that many men find it difficult to say sorry. The idea of her thinking that he's sorry. You want to see the expression? No, 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 no. How can I be sorry? I said, sir, you didn't hear what you did to her. What you did to her is only done by thugs, by hoodlums, by people that don't fear God, don't know God. And you know God. He said, well... I will sort it out, but I don't sit down with her with anybody. Because now, if you sit down, if I sit down with her with, before anybody, and they tell, her, tell me to tell her sorry, she will now assume that I'm sorry. Tomorrow again, she will not expect me to say sorry. Praise God. So you see, there are sometimes this is what Bible calls foolish acts. Those foolish acts, constant arguments, constant malice, are like cancer. They will eat up the marriage. It will crash. There's no two ways about it. So I called the woman. She said, Ma, you have tried. Please don't bother yourself. I've already decided I will leave the marriage. Because I know that he would never tell me a story. And I'm not going to forgive this one. Now, I just, at that point, I just said, you know what? It's okay to you take a decision. But remember my advice. I said before, stay there. But as far as they're not hitting you or throwing you out or something, at first, your life is not in danger. There is no need for you to leave your marriage. But if you are alive, I've gotten to the point where you will probably be thrown out at midnight or something. Your life is getting small, small into, the, into danger. Because at 12 midnight, what if somebody carries you? What if something happens to you? 
Then ma or sir, come apologize for this. He said, I can't apologize. Something is wrong with the man. And the man is seeking for spiritual means. I want to go to a prophet. I want to go to spiritual means to counsel. I said, okay, since he said my rules, I said, have you gone for counseling before? He said, yes, we've gone for counseling. I said, who counsel people? Two of you. He said, no, one prophet. I said, I don't understand. You want to ask the prophet. He said, yes, I want to ask the prophet what's happening in my marriage. I said, no, the prophet will tell you that there is demon in your marriage. What else did he tell you? Yes, my wife is possessed. I said, yes. I find the prophet. There's nothing, there's no solution. That is not what they call counseling. Counseling means call your wife. You put them before a marriage counselor and talk. All the things you said to me, do you say to her? Say to her that she understands that you think she's buying too much clothes. She will tell you she thinks you're not giving her money. You will say it. That is counseling. There's nothing demonic about it. Leave the devil where he belongs. That even if man and that woman sir, with this your mindset, you will see the same mistake. So sometimes it's foolish acts that break down marriages. Being too big to say sorry. Constant argument. Keeping malice. I'm too big, oh. I can't say sorry. I can't be found saying sorry. She should be sorry, not me. Praise God. The other thing we see is not turning the tongue. Proverbs 18, 21. The power of love and death lies in the tongue. And he that loves it will live will eat his fruit. The things you say to your spouse matters. If you're a Christian brother or sister, you are expected to, to say nice words that edify to somebody else. How much more your family, your husband, your, your wife, your second half or better half. But you will find the husband and wife using every kind of hard, harsh, and brutal words on the partners. They curse, they insult, they abuse. Now, you know, curse is different from abuse. <laughs> <laughs> because when we say actually putting the words, they, they have different implications. You cross the person, use less, good for nothing, you will never amount to anything. Is it because I married you? You will abuse the person, you, have, you don't even have to do anything. Look how, there are different meanings when you cross and you abuse the person. You invoke hardship on the person and you forget that you live with the person that two of you are one. And then tomorrow, when the things you have invoked begin to play out, you will suffer it with the person. But the point is, when you are suffering with the person, you don't realize you cost it. You are the master, uh, master art or architect that designed the whole hardship. So many people have used their hands to break down instead of building. The Bible says in the book of Proverbs that a wise woman builds a house and that one tears it down. So most times you tear it down with your mouth. You tear the house down with your mouth. You just a woman, ah, oh, my husband, you just said, I come with that man now, you don't trust them all. The man you're talking about is right there. <laughs> don't trust them. That's how men are. They are good for nothing. They are this. You don't think your husband is right here. You don't think how he feels about it. Now, some of them think they're making jokes. There are some jokes you don't play with your husband or your wife, especially in public. It's not every joke you go and joke with your husband. They're joking, you go and fold them and joke. Your husband is right. You're insulting him publicly. You know that woman, the Bible says your husband will part of you by the gate. And the one that he are, is ashamed of you because he doesn't even realize what you're doing. You go to the king's palace and tear his garment there. And you think you're being smart and wise. So, foolish tongues and foolish actions and not telling your tongue can cause destruction in marriage. There are some pitfalls that we must always try to avoid. Consciously trying to avoid them. The last one I'll give as a bonus is managing finances in marriage. You, you know, most times men appear like they have everything sorted. They appear like, you know, I have money, I want to marry you. And that's the problem. Stop trying to appear like you are rich when you want to marry a woman. Because a small woman, a small girl who has not mature, will think that you have all the money in the world and she begins to live the way you have made that belief. And to know when she comes in, there is no money really. It becomes a problem. But when you are playing and you, you manage your stuff, two of you cannot plan your resources, then it's easier. And you cannot be ashamed to be open. Some people are ashamed to be open before their spouse, the real state of things. You are trying to package. 
the packaging should be done between two of you. I was listening to one of those um, sermons that um, one of the renowned pastors, uh, Reverend Funke Adejumo, spoke. She said those days when she and her husband go to shop, they go to um, Okrika to go and buy suits. So she will wait for the junction in case her church member sees her in you know okay line so her husband will go to bed to be selecting the shirts and the suit so once my sees her she'll be like no i'm looking for my husband he's coming to pick me and stuff while the man is behind picking up shirts now that is called package that is two of them managing their resources instead of you going to buy things on credit i've seen where a woman is always buying things on credit she, she has small finance but her husband does not have at all now she's buying things on credit and having debt everywhere so I have to call the husband and say, you know what? Now she's borrowing and owing everywhere. In most cases, the husband pays when the woman is owing. But in this case, you don't have. She's one paying your own debt. If you continue to let her pay debt with that sitting down with her and reminding her that you don't have money and she doesn't have enough, you have problems. No problem. You have crisis. I told her, I'm serious. Please try to make her understand she can get everything she wants. So women see a shoe they want to buy, the bag they want to buy, anything at all they want to buy, even when they don't need it. So if you don't open up the real state of your affairs, you will think your husband has money and there is no money, you can't go into debt and bring home crisis for both of you. Praise God. Because most times when the debtor comes, they don't say, where is your wife? They first ask, where is your wife? He says she's not. And they say, ah, that she's only me, come and pay me. Maybe they say, I will go when she comes, but they say, no, no, your wife is only me, pay me. So most times, always important to know that the crisis you bring through financial debt affects the whole family. Everything you do that brings you down does not just bring you alone down, now it's bringing the other partner down. Praise God. I hope we we'll bless tonight about this word. Please let's rest our feet and begin to pray so that God will bless his words in our hearts. And let us also ask the Lord the Holy Spirit to put in our lives the ability to avoid pitfalls in marriage, the ability to overlook some things and learn how not to fall into the snares of Satan in marriages. Open your mouth and begin to ask the Lord to help you, to give you the wisdom to maneuver in marriage, the wisdom to maneuver in marriage, not to fall